Before watching the video, make sure to check out the description. You'll find a link there to sign up for the Bybit Exchange. It's my top choice for trading and ranks first in trading volume, liquidity, and offers the lowest fees. Just by using this exchange, you'll save a few hundred dollars every month. Why am I recommending you register through my referral link in the description? By using it, you'll get a cash bonus for signing up ranging from $10 to $30,000 depending on your deposit amount. Most of my subscribers receive around $100. Even if you don't have any funds to deposit, you'll still get at least $10 credited to your account. For those of you who are big traders with substantial deposits, you could receive up to $30,000, but you'll need to reach certain trading volume thresholds for larger bonuses. On this page, click here to see what bonus you'll get for signing up. The link is down below. Alright then, enjoy the video. Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll explain why I believe Bitcoin will reach new all-time highs. Let's try to figure out when this might happen. We'll look at the circumstances, what's going on with the overall market, including altcoins, and I'll share a bit about my positions. Let's start by taking a look at the American stock market chart. As you can see, it's pulled back slightly from its peak, but not too long ago it was consistently hitting new highs. I'd like to remind you that all of this is happening during a period of higher interest rates. Here's what the Federal Reserve's key interest rate looks like. It's at 5.5%. The higher this rate, the more money flows into the market, more loans are taken out, and companies see faster growth in revenue and profits. Consequently, people generally have more money, wages grow faster, individuals pay off debts more quickly, and more money finds its way into the stock market one way or another. As we've seen throughout history, when the stock market is doing well and there's a strong upward trend, Cryptocurrency also sees significant growth. However, if there's a sell-off in the stock market, we typically see sales beginning in crypto as well. Why is that? It's because these markets are interconnected. The American stock market is, after all, the largest in the world, with the highest liquidity and the biggest concentration of capital. And these same capitals, one way or another, also invest in cryptocurrency. Let's say I have a billion dollars with 100 million in crypto and 900 million in stocks. If I suddenly need to liquidate a third of it, about 300 million, I'd obviously sell a bit from both. But since crypto has much less liquidity, it tends to drop more sharply in these moments. So, in a risk-on environment when buyers dominate the markets, crypto tends to rise strongly. But in times of risk, crypto falls sharply. And keep in mind that the fund is growing regardless of the current high-key interest rate. Let's take a look at what was happening when this rate started to increase. It began to rise at the start of 2022, more specifically in April and May of 2022, and continued up until August 2023. Three. Let's examine what was happening in the markets during this time. March to April, well, it turns out there was also a slight pullback from the peak during this period, and it was during this time that the key interest rates started to increase, which led to a significant market correction. Now, 23% might not be much for the crypto market, for instance, but for the stock market, it's quite significant. A number of stocks plummeted by an even larger percentage at that point. Nevertheless, since October 2022, the market has been on an upward trend. Let's look at what happened in October. October 2022 in terms of interest rates and we'll see that, well, by November, to be more precise, the growth rate had slowed down. Pay attention to how rapidly the key rate increased from March to November 2022 and then from June to August 2023, it continued to rise. It's clear that the pace has been noticeable. Moreover, I'll tell you that from March to November, the key rate grew at the fastest pace we've seen in the last 40 years. I also mentioned this to you at the time and when the growth rate of the key rate slowed down, that's when the market started to grow. Furthermore, the market didn't start growing in a way that was disconnected from reality. Let's take a look at the economy. What's happening with the economy? First of all, the key rate was increased in response to inflation. Notice the inflation. In 2022, it reached up to 9%, and that's inflation in dollars. In other words, the dollar is a currency that also depreciates. It experiences inflation too, which is regulated one way or another by the Federal Reserve System, including through the use of the key rate in raising it. And note that it has significantly decreased and is currently around 3%, even slightly decreasing despite the fact that the key rate is no longer rising. In addition to the 
When GDP falls below 0% for two consecutive quarters, which is six months, it's called a recession. The Fed closely monitors financial indicators during a recession and typically stimulates markets, consumption, and the economy in various ways. But pay attention to this. There's actually no need for such stimulation right now. Whether in 2022 or 2023, GDP is positive, not just hovering around zero, but sitting at around 2 to 2.5%. Two this means the economy is growing. It's thriving with an interest rate of 5.5%, which is a level we haven't seen since before 2007. It was around 2000 back then. Nevertheless, the market is alive and growing. Companies are making more money, GDP is increasing, and markets are reaching new highs. So why am I telling you all this? Let's take a look at the news before we move on to technical analysis and what's happening in the crypto world. Let's take a look at the news and see what's happening in the world overall. If you've been following the news for the past few years, you might have noticed how the Fed rate started increasing. You'd often see news reports mentioning some indicator that supposedly shows a recession. Well, a recession basically means the economy is struggling, it's declining, GDP is falling, and markets are likely to drop until the Fed steps in to stimulate them somehow. For about two years now, there's been this indicator based on the yield of 10-year Treasury bonds. It's supposed to be more reliable than two-year or three-month bonds. When this indicator's graph dips below zero, it's traditionally been seen as a predictor of inflation. This graph has actually been below zero for over two years now. And now we're seeing articles suggesting that this widely used indicator might not be as reliable as everyone thought. In other words, the economy is completely ignoring all signals, even strong ones like the spread between 10-year and short-term bonds. Let's move on to what happens next. Regarding inflation, note that the headline is poorly translated into Russian. It says inflation rose by 2.5%, which will pave the way for a rate cut. These are the kind of headlines we're seeing. The fact is that inflation is actually decreasing. It was at 2.6% in May. This refers to inflation excluding certain food products, and so on. If you look at the inflation data I showed you earlier, you'll see slightly different figures. Well, that's because it's a different indicator. Nevertheless, inflation is declining, and people are already anticipating potential rate cuts. What would happen if the interest rate is reduced? Not during a recession, though. Yes, it's understood that if a recession occurs, rates are lowered to support the market. But before that happens, the market will likely decline significantly just due to the fact of a recession. If a recession doesn't happen, let's say inflation decreases, allowing the economy to grow more actively, they might lower the interest rate. Even though the economy was already doing well, this could make it grow even faster. In other words, without any major downturn or correction, the markets will likely continue to grow, possibly at an even faster pace. Let's move on. GDP grew by 2.8% in the second quarter, which is much higher than expected. So we're not just talking about the possibility of a recession. The economy is actually growing at a rate much higher than policymakers anticipated. We won't dwell on this too much. It's clear that the economy is doing well. Just to remind you once again, we're talking about the U.S. economy here. Let's continue. Powell is the chairman of the Federal Reserve. He's indicating that the Fed won't wait for inflation to drop to 2% before considering rate cuts, so he understands the current rhetoric. While the economy is doing well, questions are already being raised about when and if they should cut rates at all. Let's move on. I'll get to the specifics about crypto a bit later. Now there's some news about China. Things aren't all rosy there. They're also monitoring retail sales and planning to stimulate the economy. They'll be issuing debt bonds to boost sales, particularly in the automotive sector, by increasing subsidies. I'm not too familiar with China's specifics, but they're offering subsidies of 20,000 yuan and 15,000 yuan, depending on whether you buy an electric vehicle or a regular car. So they're supporting the economy on another continent in the other hemisphere, just like we're seeing economic support elsewhere. And why am I mentioning all this? Well, it's because the markets are already doing well and the economy is in good shape. Things might even get better since inflation seems to be decreasing. If the Fed starts lowering the key interest rate, we could see even more money flowing into the markets. It won't happen overnight, of course, but the money will come eventually. Moreover, let's take a look at what Bitcoin was doing during this time, specifically when the key interest rate was changing. In particular, where are we in March 2022? Here it is. The situation is pretty much the same as it is now. At most, there's a kind of double top, it grows a bit, and then they start to sharply increase the key rate. The stock market crashes, as I've shown you, and what happens to crypto? Crypto collapses, and while it's not so visible on this graph, Bitcoin fell by 70%, and altcoins went even lower. You can see how bad it all was. And at the moment when the pace of key rate increases slowed down, look what happened. A bottom formed and growth began. Let me remind you, when the pace of key rate increases slowed down, it was November 2022 after the last increase. Let's look at November 2022. Here it is, corresponding to the bottom. As soon as 
Russia's information came out that the rate would increase only slightly, not at the same pace as before, the market found its bottom and started to grow. Despite the fact that pay attention, let's take another look at the GDP. It didn't drop below zero. In other words, all this increase in the key interest rate wasn't accompanied by any economic problems. This is important. People didn't end up with less money. And here they bought the dip, driving the market up, and now we're seeing a double top forming. Currently, we're at a similar point to where we were in this period of 2022. But now the question isn't about whether they'll raise the key interest rate. Now the question is when and how quickly they'll lower it, which will be seen as positive. So, from a fundamental perspective, there's no reason for serious corrections or significant drops. Moreover, I haven't even mentioned anything about Bitcoin fundamentals or what's happening with crypto news in general. I've only shown economic news. Let's take a look at what's going on with crypto news. First off, in Russia, it turns out they're passing laws to allow international payments in crypto. Well, one way or another, I think this is related to the crypto ruble. Moreover, I've seen that they're planning to create some kind of national crypto exchange or launch crypto trading on the Moscow exchange and they're even going to legalize mining there. So, there you have it. This is positive in a way, but it's not exactly the topic I wanted to discuss today. Let's move on. Just to remind you, if you missed it, they've launched the Ether ETF and the Bitcoin ETF was launched earlier and the Ether ETF was launched recently. There was also news about launching Bitcoin ETFs. The market immediately rose by 20% on this news. Then, whether it was fake news or not, the market quickly dropped. Well, it stabilized somewhere near the top and later it turned out that they were indeed launching a Bitcoin ETF. They did end up approving them. And now they're launching ETFs for Ether. This will affect the crypto market in the following ways. If Ulta is currently at rock bottom, then when money starts flowing in, it's clearly going to rise against Bitcoin. This chart shows it's poised to grow in comparison to Bitcoin. In other words, even if Bitcoin stagnates and doesn't reach new highs, Ulta will start growing against Bitcoin. It might even skyrocket compared to the dollar. And this is one of the positive signals in this sphere. So they've launched it on the market. As someone who has an account with any broker on the stock exchange, I can tell you that the American stock market has a huge amount of money circulating. It's the largest and most liquid stock market in the world. I remind you, I've mentioned this before. But let's say I'm not involved with crypto at all, yet I hear about this crypto hype. In just two clicks, I can invest in crypto on the American stock exchange through ETFs for both Bitcoin and now Ethereum. This means I can also invest in Alta and the money will start flowing. Well, maybe not a flood, but there'll definitely be more of them either way. Let's move on. What else is happening with crypto? There's a proposal to create a strategic national cryptocurrency reserve and never sell your bitcoins. You might have heard about this, or maybe not. New information has come out suggesting it might not actually happen, and Trump didn't mention anything about it in his latest speech. It's unclear if he's backtracking or not, but Trump and his supporters are big crypto enthusiasts, and these kinds of statements keep popping up. Moreover, there's a global discussion about the possibility of countries building up reserves in crypto, particularly in Bitcoin. So, while in the past, reserves were held in gold, now the question is whether countries will start accumulating reserves in digital gold, in Bitcoins. And I'll tell you this, it might not happen in the immediate future, but if it's being talked about, it's bound to happen one way or another, because more and more people are buying crypto, more and more people are investing a larger percentage of their capital in Bitcoin, even those who make key decisions about reserves are buying cryptocurrency. Trump is also buying crypto. You see what I'm getting at? If Trump, who didn't buy crypto before, suddenly started buying it last year and this year and is now a supporter, well, the same thing could happen with people who, let's say, work in the Federal Reserve System or make decisions about national reserves. Every year, more and more people are getting into crypto. And notice I've just shown you all the latest news that's being discussed in the world from an economic perspective. There's no negativity, not even close. Moreover, when we talk about crypto news and analyze what's happening in the market, people are usually encouraged to buy crypto when it's near its highs. And conversely, they're encouraged to sell when it's near its lows. We can see now that crypto is developing and being integrated into the economy. There aren't any frenzied calls to buy crypto at the moment. In other words, they're not drawing crowds to the market right now, but Bitcoin is holding steady near its peak. Despite some very negative signals here, and despite the fact that altcoins were dropping significantly and it seemed like a sharp decline should have started here too, that's not the case. There isn't much selling pressure, there are some buyers and the trading volumes are steady. Essentially, everything that's happened from the bottom to now is just a flag pattern. I think you know how a flag pattern trades in a trend, it's simply a pause before the next momentum push. From a fundamental perspective, I don't see any reason why Bitcoin would crash dramatically right now. Moreover, as you know if you've watched my previous videos, I showed you that altcoins have found their bottom and
and I've gone long on several coins. For instance, I still have an open long position on Mizgo. Take note of how much it has fallen. Which has already taken off. Here's where I opened up and pay attention a double bottom pattern was formed. The double bottom played out at this moment. Moreover, the bottom level was retested. The mirror level held, it went higher and broke through the previous significant level. We've drawn a cup and handle pattern, which, let me show you like this, how much it could potentially rally. Well, about up to here, to 1.85. All right, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself talking about my positions. Let's sum it up. I don't see potential for a fall, but there's no negative outlook either. And that says something. I'm waiting for a retest, though it's hard to say when, because, well, you see, the volatility is high here, it's in a flat, and it might stay here for a while. There are no signs of an immediate breakout, but I think it will happen one way or another in the near future. This green zone is marked here. You can mark it for yourself too, if you're out of the market and unsure when to enter trades. You can catch the next impulse by buying, for example, right here. Moreover, let's take a look at the next chart. This is the same chart of alts versus Bitcoin. I showed you this in previous videos and explained how to analyze it and when to buy. This was the original chart, but I've modified it a bit. You can use this new ticker. Here it is. What did I do here? I excluded the USDT crypto cap and also subtracted one from the final result. This shows the ratio of total cryptocurrency capitalization to Bitcoin's capitalization. Right now, it's 0.7, which means that the capitalization of all alts divided by Bitcoin's capitalization is 7 tenths. In other words, 70% of Bitcoin's capitalization is accounted for by all other altcoins. Well, that's excluding USDT, of course, and here we can see that in recent peak values, not the absolute highest in the past, but in recent peaks, this graph reached up to X2 from the current value. So, hypothetically, if you buy any altcoin, and during an alt season, when such a situation occurs in the market, everything will grow. Even something super weak or completely forgotten will make you money. And this is in relation to Bitcoin, I remind you. So, if Bitcoin even stays flat, and an alt goes X2 against it, then it will also be an X2 growth against the dollar. If Bitcoin at that moment also doubles against the dollar, well, consequently, alts will go X4 against the dollar. You understand what I'm talking about, right? And here I've highlighted several levels above which you can buy. They've fallen now, which I didn't expect. If you've watched previous videos, you knew about this, but it happened anyway, despite the fact that there's no upward trend here yet, and it would seem it's too early to buy. It's best to enter when the trend is breaking, at least after it exits one of these levels. However, this doesn't mean we can't be at the bottom now, especially for those coins that have clearly shown it. There's strength in the market, and there's no negative news from a fundamental perspective. Moreover, there are positives. Crypto is developing, markets are growing, and they're likely to continue growing. Altcoins are at the bottom, and there are signs of this bottom. Well, for those who are afraid to buy the bottom, you can enter at the trend change. It's currently in a flat pattern, and you can enter there too. If you're afraid to enter during the flat, you can go long after it breaks through the nearest level, which is in the range of 72, $73,000. That's purely theoretical. As for my trades, I have MSQ open, a long position, bottom, and waves. I opened MSQ before this, as I told you, but I was knocked out by this movement. I exited here, then entered here, exited, and entered again even lower. Let's see what comes of this. I also used GMT, which also showed a bottom, and I got knocked out exactly at the OMSGO level. I placed a poor stop loss here, and I got knocked out below this level, but as you can see, it was just a test of the level. Sometimes you're just unlucky, it happens. I didn't re-enter here, but these are the kinds of trades we're looking at. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'm anticipating market growth, so I'm trading long. If anyone's asking which direction to trade, I'd recommend considering long setups and skipping short ones. Good luck. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. By the way, I recently created a free mini course on my Telegram channel. You can subscribe using the link below. There's more information, more content, and it's updated more frequently. Secondly, I've made a free mini course on crypto trading, which you can find in the pinned message. So, subscribe to the Telegram channel, where you'll find the mini course on trading in the pinned message, and you can take it for free. Good luck. Бесплатный мини-курс, он в закрепленном сообщении находится по трейдингу крипто. То есть подписывайтесь на Telegram, там в закрепленном сообщении увидите мини-курс по трейдингу и можно его пройти бесплатно. Удачи!